Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Nagoya Bonds K prediction. Uh, this it's gonna be a little bit a little bit of hell at the top. We got to figure out what we're gonna do in a pretty bad situation. <laughs> uh, once we get down to the top Mega Shira ranks, uh, and then we're we're gonna be behind for a little bit. So uh, we'll get into that detail uh, a little bit later. But first, Jake has uh, a nice note from one of our sumo friends. Yeah, we had um, uh, nationals at the beginning of this month um, in San Diego. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Go check out our recap with uh, Menken from Honu Sumo, who is my co-host on the day. And we also got Sensei Seth Adams talking about uh, his, spoiler alert, national championship win. Um, It happened like almost a month ago now. Like, I'm sorry, if you haven't heard spoilers, (laughs) that's, yeah. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> I did want to give a special shout out to uh, Andrew and Adrian, two listeners who came down to San Diego to actually watch na- watch nationals. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for coming by to say hello to me and introducing yourselves. Um, That's awesome. Always feel way more important than we really are to be recognized in public by strangers. Just the best, weirdest feeling in the world. So thank yeah, you. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but yeah, doesn't anyways, happen to me because I don't I don't go to sumo events. Ryan but... doesn't leave the house, so like no, there's I Ryan doesn't interact Why with would strangers. I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what, do you, what would you do that for? <laughs> you know um, how humid it is outside. Oh my it's god, it is there. awful. And I have to. I it's swim lessons week for me and the toddler, so like I'm Oof. outside way more than I wish I was. <laughs> but anyways, more amateur sumo updates on our normal episodes. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, Andrew and Adrian, for introducing yourselves. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out for more amateur stuff coming up. I've got some uh, some new stuff coming out on the new leadership in the USSF. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, and before we dive into the Bonds K, my prediction, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we, as always, are going to be showing my predictions live. And Jake, just to make the video look a little bit better, change what cell on the spreadsheet you are selecting. Oh, no, there's a little blue corner in there, isn't there? <laughs> ah, yeah. I thought I did so good. Yep. Never so mind. As, uh, what we got here, we got the results from Natsu on the left, and then on the right hand side will be where I predict all of those Rikshi will land based on those results on the left. So let's dive right into it at Yokozuna on the east side. He hasn't retired yet. It is Teru no Fuji. But of course, and there's no other Yokozuna on the west side. At Ozeki. We only got to live in the nice world of four Ozeki for two Basho until Kirishima's neck made him unable to do any form of winning sumo, and he will be demoted to Sekiwake following back-to-back losing records. So that means we have three remaining Ozeki, and they will be ordered from most wins to least in the previous Bonske, which places Koto Zakura as the second highest Rikshi on the Bonske at Ozeki 1 East. Then we will have Hoshoryu at Ozeki 1 West and Takakesho at Ozeki 2 West. Ozeki 2 East is left vacated as Takakesho is placed on the west side on uh, ah, west side of the Bonske to balance out Teru no Fuji, who is on the east side of the Bonske. We've explained that plenty of times. Uh, but due to Takakesho being Kadoban, once again, I believe for the ninth time in his career, uh, we have a chance to drop our Ozeki numbers down to two if he is not able to recover from his continuous neck injury. So we went down to three. We could have anywhere from two to four Ozeki next Basho, depending on yeah. what Takakesho and Kirishima do. Yeah, I, it's such a bummer because I know that we've spent most of 2024 talking about how like the top tier has kind of solidified and then, yeah, not so much. Yep. Uh, so we usually do fun facts. Sad fact. Uh, Ozeki <laughs> are being demoted at a much higher rate over the past seven years than at any other point in history. Uh, with Kirishima's demotion, there has been at least one Ozeki demoted to Sekiwake in each of the past six years. At no other time in sumo history is there a streak with six consecutive years of, of an Ozeki being demoted from his rank and then continuing on his sumo career. There have been nine demotions from Ozeki since March of 2017. 
a seven-year period. Before that, the previous nine demotions occurred between 2000 and 2014, a 14-year period, wow. double what we're oh. currently in. And prior to that, the previous nine demotions occurred between 1972 and 2000, a 28-year period, quadruple what we're currently in. Uh, so two factors. I did not account for uh, Ozeki that might have had back-to-back losing records and then retired like Goedo did. So uh, it could just be maybe a lot more Ozeki are continuing in their sumo career, or it could be there's just a lot more Ozeki dropping from the rank than there used to be. Yeah, that's that's interesting to think about because, uh, yeah, how uh, we we definitely have had some really, really severe cases like Terano Fuji got demoted and then you know, worked all the way back up, of course. Then mm-hmm. there was Kota Shogaku, who dropped down from Ozeki and still wrestled for a few years. Yep. Tochi Noshi dropped from Ozeki Akiyasu. twice. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's fascinating. Good find. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we so, need a we need a, a sound effect for sad facts. Yeah. Be like a... <laughs> <laughs> Well, we would have had to have gotten one for fun fact first, so. That's true, and we're too lazy to do that, so yeah. this is, uh, <laughs> this stands no chance. Exactly. All right, moving on to Sekiwake. So the members of the Sekiwake rank are fairly clear. There should be three of them. Abi had a winning record as a Sekiwake. Obviously, he will stay. He wasn't on an Ozeki run. Hidishima will be de- demoted from Ozeki and will be Sekiwake. And Ono Sato exceeded the 11 win total that is typically required for Komosubi to force open a new Sekiwake rank. But... What order will those three be in? Uh, The easiest spot to fill is actually the lowest ranked Sekiwake, which will be Kirishima, as the demoted Ozeki is always the lowest ranked Sekiwake. Uh, We saw a very similar similar situation to this in January of last year when Shodai was demoted. There were two Sekiwake, the Basho that uh, Shodai was demoted. had his last losing record as an Ozeki. There were two Sekiwake uh, that had winning records that were staying. Uh, Maigashira with 12 wins that forced open a new Sekiwake rank. And then Shodai, who was dropping from Ozeki. So we had four Sekiwake as Shodai was dropping. Typically, when somebody forces open a third Sekiwake slot, kind of like what we have here with Ono Sato kind of forcing open a third slot. They are the lowest ranked Sekiwake despite previous records. Uh, but in the case of a dropping Ozeki, they always take the lowest Sekiwake rank like Shodai did in this scenario when he ended up behind the Maigashira that had 12 wins to force open a new Sekiwake slot. So I feel very, very, very comfortable putting Kirishima as our Sekiwake 2 East. So then I need to decide between Abi and Ono Sato. We have the Sekiwake East spot opening up because Wakamoto Haru went 4 and 11 this past Basho. And conventional thinking would be that you just slide Abi over from the West Sekiwake rank to the East side. He had 10 wins. But I do think there is a chance that Ono Sato getting a Yusho could allow him to jump over Abi for that spot. We have gone over recently how a Sekiwake West with a Yusho or Jun Yusho can hop over a Sekiwake East and bump them. Them over to the Sekiwake West side. So I'm curious if that courtesy is going to be extended to a Komosubi that gets a Yusho as well. I've gone back in the past and seen cases where a Komosubi with a very strong record has jumped over a Sekiwake with a winning record uh, and other cases where they were kept behind a Sekiwake with a winning record. So my guess is as good as anyone's based on past precedent going both ways on this one. I'm just going to say that they send Ono Sato to the top of the Sekiwake ranks and put him at Sekiwake 1 East and Abi at Sekiwake 1 West. Especially if you're of the mind that if Ono Sato goes absolutely nuts, 14-1, and 15-0, and 0, maybe they want to promote him to Ozeki after this Basho. Probably want to have him doing it from the Sekiwake 1 East rank instead of Sekiwake 1 West. So that's another smaller reason why I've got Ono Sato jumping over Abi to take that open Sekiwake East spot. That's the uh, picking with your heart and study your head that has gotten you to this... number two on the Bonske list. 
one <laughs> ouch um and there's a little bit of head with that uh no just... i know i know <laughs> It's also some heart. Absolutely. One of my favorite newcomers, everybody's favorite newcomer, uh, and then everybody's most despised Richie, including mine. So, yeah, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Call A, call B. Uh, at Komosubi, this is pretty straightforward rank here. There are two open spots with Ono Sato going up to Sekiwake and Asano Yama dropping due to his absence from the Natsu Basho. There are three other Rikshi whose previous rank and record make them deserving of a Sanyaku rank. Daisho, who went 11 and 4 from Maegashira 1, Hida Duumi, who went 9 and 6 at Maegashira 2, and Meisei, who went 10 and 5 at Maegashira 5. The one that easily Easily deserves to be ranked the highest is Daisho. So I have him as Komosubi East. Then Hida de Umi deserves to be the next highest ranked. Uh, so I have him landing at Komosubi West. And unfortunately for Meisei, a 10 and 5 record from Maegashira 5 will not force open a new Komosubi slot. He was third in line for the Komosubi rank. So despite having a record that deserves a Sanyaku, he's just going to miss out this time. And I don't think there's any chance Daisho forces open a new like Sekiwake slot. I was going to uh, ask, yeah. He he went 13 and 2 for Maegashira 1 and won a U show a few years ago and ended up at Komosubi. So 11 and 4 well, certainly is not going to do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So now we get to the zone of death. So Meisei just missed out on the Komosubi ranks, but should make him a very easy candidate to take the Maegashira 1 East ranking. He's the next Rikshi who deserves to be ranked, and the next Rikshi who deserves to be ranked after him uh, deserves to be Maegashira 2. So there's nobody pushing the issue with Meisei being our top Maegashira. And then that Rikshi that does deserve to be ranked Maegashira 2 is Atami Fuji. And there's no Rikshi that deserves to be ranked as high as Maegashira 1 West. So I have him taking just a half rank demotion to land at Maegashira 1 West following a 7 and 8 record. There's no upward pressure to force anybody else up there. Uh, in fact, <laughs> yeah, now, we're gonna, <laughs> now, now we're going to get to the, the, the tipping point. On this I, I don't see a lot of green that can move up very far. Very <laughs> astute, a, Jake. <laughs> I see a lot of red that needs to go down, though. This, yeah. yeah, this is this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Yeah. So the Tommy Fuji was the only Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira two. We placed him at Maegashira one. So now we got to start digging from below to find who's going to fill our Maegashira 2 ranks. There's nobody that deserves to be ranked Maegashira 3. And then there is one Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maegashira 4, but that's Takayasu. And he had a losing record for Maegashira right. 3. <laughs> so no chance he's going up to Maegashira 2. So then we need to check out the Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira 5. And we five find Gonoyama and Ura who both had losing uh, records from below the Maegashira 2 East rank. So neither of them can land here either, which means we turn to the Rikshi that deserved to be Maegashira 6 to fill in the Maegashira 2 rank. So there's going to be some very extreme luck on this Bonske. No matter how you cut it, it is unavoidable. Something dumb is going to happen. Let's so have it. Two of the Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 6 are Tobizaru and Onosho, who, once again, both had losing records from <laughs> below the rank that we're trying to fill. So that eliminates two of the possibilities at Maegashira 6. So that leaves us with two options. Mitake Yumi, who went 8-7 and seven from Maegashira 7, and Wakamoto Haru, who went 4-11 and 11 from Seki Wake. <laughs> I don't... I don't think there's any reason to look beyond these two Rikshi to try to fill these ranks. There's no more Rikshi dropping from the Sanyaku that we could use to plug this spot besides Wakamoto Haru. Um, all of the other Rikshi that deserve to be like Maegashira 8 or Maegashira 7 have no chance of it getting any form of bias to jump either Mitaki Yumi or Wakamoto Haru right. unless the Bazke committee just decides to arbitrarily demote Wakamoto Haru a little bit farther in favor of just some Maegashira 8 or 9 with an 8 and 7 record. So hmm. no real reason to think anybody else would get preferential treatment over these two. So... We've narrowed down the two, and we just need to decide which order they're going to go in. And honestly, 
it's it's a bad situation, but for me, I think it's pretty easy to fill. Wakamoto Haru has San Yaku bias and East Side bias on his side. He was on the East Side. Mitaki Yumi was on the West Side. So I think Wakamoto Haru is going to get an incredibly soft landing for an after a four and eleven record from Sekiwake to land at Maigashira to East. So after that, we just got to go with Mitake Yumi at Maigashira to West. There's nobody else to consider unless you want to try to keep Gon Oyama here following a 6-9 and nine record, but there's no precedent for a 6-9 and nine Rikshi keeping their previous rank, so we've got to go with oh, like Mitake Yumi. Yeah, I... I didn't do the research. I'm going to assume on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it, there's it would probably be something, something if, back from like the 20s or 30s that was dumb or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but. but like certainly not that we have seen. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like you'd have to like you'd have to search like every single rank one at a time or something like that if you wanted mm-hmm. to do it by sumo DB queries, probably. Yeah, so uh, I've got Mitaki Yumi with a five rank promotion following an eight and seven record. We've <laughs> certainly seen that before. I think we've seen worse. I think I've we've done like six rank promotions following eight eight and seven. So but I not unprecedented, like but unsavory nonetheless for yeah, no both kidding. of both of the Rikshi ending up here. Yep. We get to Maigashira three East, and we mentioned him before. He deserves to be Maigashira four. Uh, Takayasu had a seven and eight record from the Maigashira three East rank. No other Rikshi deserves to be ahead of him or even the same rank as him. So I feel comfortable that they're not going to demote Takayasu and use him to stop the bleeding a little bit here at Maigashira three East. And as Takayasu was the only Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maigashira four to fill Maigashira three West, we've got to go back and look to the Rikshi that deserved to be Maigashira five. See if anybody, any of those guys have become eligible at this point. And one of them has become eligible. And that is who I'll be putting at Maigashira three West. And that is Gono Yama who went six and nine from Maigashira two West. So just a one rank drop for him, but that's not, out of the ordinary at all for a six and nine record when we're in these dire of straits. Sure. Then at Maigashira four, the other Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maigashira five is Ura, who went seven and eight from Maigashira four west so he can't oh, go quite <laughs> yet <laughs> which means like, we have okay, to we're out of the we're out of the woods here right ah dang nope. it <laughs> yeah uh so that means we got to go back to the group of rikshi that deserve to be ranked maigashira six so pulling them up by two ranks a lot better than the four ranks we were looking at before yeah. uh, uh of the rikshi that deserve to be maigashira six only one can be placed here, and so that's who I'm going to put here, and that is Toby Zaru, who went 6-9 and nine from Maigashira 3 West. So you could kind of see a pattern like we're in a tough spot, like just as far as like, wow, a lot of people are getting lucky, but I feel like actually composing the Bonske here, it's not that difficult. Like when sure. you're in these tough situations, like a lot of the choices – are eliminating themselves and so you're just left with well this is the only guy that can do it it sucks but that's how it's gonna happen but it but it's logically consistent and it it works it just feels wrong (laughs) could they arbitrarily decide uh we want takayasu to take some sort of demotion so we'll have like gono yama go at maigashira three east and takayasu drop to maigashira three west you could it's unlikely could you have somebody like Taka No Show who deserves to be Maigashira 7 jump ahead of Takayasu at Maigashira 3 East? Because that's the next guy with a winning record that could jump that high. That doesn't seem right either. That doesn't sit right either. So it it sucks, but it's honestly not that difficult, I feel like, to put it together. Let's let's maybe save those words until the bonds cake comes out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm right on all of this Real before I cocky start there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And then since we just talked about him, Ura, he went seven and eight from my Gashira four West in the previous Basho and the next Rikshi who deserves to be ranked and is eligible to take this rank deserves to be my Gashira seven. So I'm going to be keeping Ura at my Gashira four West following his seven and eight record. 
Then we get to Mega Shira 5. Uh, for the final time at Mega Shira 5 East, I need to look to the Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Mega Shira 6. So the Rikshi that deserved to be Mega Shira 6, I've got them going as high as Mega Shira 2 and as low as Mega Shira 5. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> So luckily, the last Rikshi in that group that deserves that rank is ono- Onosho, who went 7-8 and eight from Maigashira 5 East. The next group of Rikshi that deserve to be ranked all deserve to be lower than Onosho. So once again, I'm going to keep a third 7-8 and eight Rikshi at their former rank to, pro- to prevent any further over and under promotions and demotions. And so since Onosho was the last Rikshi that deserved the Maigashira 6 rank, we now have to go to the Rikshi that deserves to be Maigashira 7 to fill Maigashira 5 West. There are four Rikshi here, but only one of them was previously in the Joy. That was Oho, who was Rikshi 16 out of 16 in the Joy, but it still counts. Uh, And because... (laughs) I'm going to believe that the last guy in the joy will get joy bias. I'm going to have him winning the tiebreaker tiebreaker against the other three Rikshi that deserve this rank to drop only one rank from Maigashira four to Maigashira five West after a six and nine record. Again, it's, it's something that happens all the time, but not something that happens for like 10 ranks in a row. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, feels kind of weird, but yeah, like you said, it it slots into place. It just doesn't feel very good. Yeah, and this is like the first one where I'm like, well, maybe they're not going to give Oho that benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next Rikshi that I'm considering, maybe they'll jump him ahead and they'll just treat Oho like a regular guy. And maybe he ends up at like Maigashira six or seven instead. But I'm going to I'm going to trust in the joy bias here. So at Maigashira, where are we at? Six, six east. Yep. We are we're going to start actually catching up to our rankings in pretty quick order. Now, all the Rikshi that weren't deserving to be like two through five, we're catching up with them at like they all deserve to be like six through nine. Um, Sure. So to fill in the Maigashira six rank, once again, look to the Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maigashira seven. And lucky for us, all of them could be placed here at Maigashira six, eight. East. It just comes down to a two Rikshi race between Takanosho and Shona Naumi, as I believe Koto Shoho is eliminated from contention for this rank due to being on the west side while the other two were on the east side. So of those two, Shona Naumi and Takanosho, Shona Naumi had more wins, which is the typical tiebreaker. So I've got Shona Naumi rising four ranks to Maigashira six east following a nine and six record, and Takanosho landing at Maigashira six west rising two ranks following an eight and seven record from Maigashira eight. Then at Maigashira seven, that just leaves Koto Shoho from the group that deserved to be Maigashira seven to take the Maigashira seven East rank. Uh, and he will rise one rank for Maigashira eight to do so following his eight and seven record. Uh, if this is how it comes to pass, this would also make Koto Shoho the first Rikshi in the Maigashira ranks to not be over promoted or under demoted on this Bonske. <laughs> okay. So it so took us to Maigashira 7 to get there. by being the first guy not to get luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But to fill the Magashira 7 West rank, we do need to go back to some over promotions as there's nobody else who deserves Magashira 7. Luckily, there are there is only one real option to take this spot, and that is Sada Naumi, who I have rising four ranks following his nine and six record from Magashira 11. Uh, And in my head. It's also time for me to start considering Asanoyama, who was absent this past Basho from the Komosubi rank. Uh, We've seen these dropping Sanyaku Rikshi dropping uh, or guys that had like two or three wins from like Maigashira one through three. Uh, We've seen them fall in like the Maigashira nine to Maigashira 12 range over the past 20 or so years. Um, So in order to place Asanoyama, I think, We need to ignore where he deserves to be placed and instead try to find a hole to fill within the next few ranks uh, so that he can be used to prevent any more over promotions or under demotions. We had a gap here to fill where I put Sada Naumi. There's nobody who deserved to be Maigashira 7. Sada Naumi deserved to be Maigashira 8. But I do think M7 is a bit too early to consider Asanoyama. But at this point, when I'm creating the Bonsuke, he's on the back of my mind now. Sure. 
At Maigashira 8, we need to look to a group of three Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 9 as we're back to those slight over-promotions. Uh, so we could help fill this gap by placing Asanoyama, but once again, I believe Maigashira 8 is still a bit too high for him based on the past six instances of an absent Komosubi. So... Similar to Ozeki Demotions, another sad fact, uh, we're seeing more absences from Komosubi in the past few years. We have had an absent or winless uh, Komosubi in each of the past three years. Abi, Wakatakakage, and Asanoyama. The three previous absent or winless Komosubi was over a span of 14 years. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Just the futility of the Sanyaku ranks has really ramped up over the yeah, past seven years. And all of a sudden it's like one of the top one of the top narratives that I'm watching. Yeah. We should like Grand Suma Breakdown should go on a two year hiatus. See if it was us <laughs> yeah. and then like come back two years later, see what the state of Subo is at that point. I, I would be really, really like, obviously there's no way to find out, but like, I would yeah. love to know, like, what are the butterfly effects of us covering <laughs> Sumo? <laughs> Cause I guarantee there is at least one teeny tiny something somewhere in pro Sumo that has <laughs> something to do with us. Right. Like sure. That just not? means like, what if all that means is that Takanosho ended up half a rank different this boss, yeah. this Basho, because of something like that? <laughs> that, that would be incredible. I it have would. to believe that that is true. Yep. Some element of Kisuno Sato's coaching changed, like, the in, in an infinitesimally small amount because we got to meet him once in 2019. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, him taking a picture with us, like delayed him from arriving at like a certain right. meeting yeah <laughs> and like one of his jono kuchi wrestlers lost a match that day because he didn't get five minutes of extra coaching from yeah. Kisa Sato. <laughs> <laughs> we truly are the the makers and breakers in the world of sumo yep yep exactly and that that butterfly effect will only spread until 10 years from now somebody will make yokozuna that wouldn't have otherwise <laughs> absolutely 100 percent happening book it guarantee it all right, back to the Maigashira 8 rank. <laughs> there are three Rikshi that we are going to consider here, Kin Bozan, Ryuden, and Oshoma. Uh, the first spot at Maigashira 8 should easily be taken at by Ryuden. He was the only Rikshi that was on the east side of these three, so I have him rising six ranks from Maigashira 14 following a 10-5 and five record. Right next to him, I'm going to place the Rikshi, who was right next to him in the last Basho. Oh, Shoma, who similarly had a 10 and 5 record from Maigashira 14. I had Onosho written in my uh, <laughs> outline here, uh, oh, I see which that. is why I, I hesitated <laughs> saying his name. Oh, Shoma? Yeah, with Ono Sato, Oshoma, Onosho, there's too many Onos. Just ain't right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, with Oshoma, he had 10 and 5 record for Magashir 14 as well. His 10 wins versus Keen Bozon's 8 is what I believe will give Oshoma the edge to rise six ranks to take that Magashir 8 West ranking. Then at Magashir 9, we are once again placing Rikshi at the rank they deserve to be, as Keen Bozon should land at Magashir 9 East following his 8 and 7 record, uh, so giving him a one rank promotion. Then after Keen Bozon, we need to go back to giving over promotions or under demotions as the next Rikshi that should be ranked deserve to be Maigashira 10. Or we could fill this gap with Asanoyama to prevent those under demotions, which is what I am going to do, dropping him nine ranks following his absence in Natsu. So I've got Asanoyama, Maigashira at nine West. I do don't think this is a slam dunk, but I actually don't feel too bad about his placement. He was he was a tough one to place here because there weren't like any huge gaps in this range to try to fit him in. Sure. So as I mentioned before, typically we see these dropping joy Sanyaku Rikshi with horrendous records buck the typical mathematical placements and instead get inserted to prevent the over promotions and under demotions, which is why I'm okay with putting Asanoyama ahead of eight Makuuchi Rikshi that deserve to be ranked ahead of him. Eight. Wow. Okay. So this is very similar to when Abi was demoted from Komosubi to Maigashira nine West following his absence in uh, Kyushu, his absence in Aki of 2022 affecting the Botsuke of Kyushu 2022. Sure. So 
Abi would end up ahead of seven Makuuchi Rikshi he deserved to be ranked behind and went to Maegashira 9 West, which was an open slot, much like we're seeing now, even though it only prevented a half rank under demotion for Aoyama, who would have otherwise dropped two and a half ranks to Maegashira 9 West instead of his full three rank drop that he ended up getting to Maegashira 10 East. Gotcha. All- this is also consistent with how Nishkigi was ranked last Basho following his 3-12 and record from Komosubi. There was an opening at the Magashira 7 East rank, and instead of giving Mitaki Yumi a 1.5 rank promotion, a half rank over promotion for him following an 8-7 and seven record, they instead inserted Nishkigi, who deserved to be two ranks lower than Mitaki Yumi since that was an open spot. So that's how I think Asanoyama is going to be treated here. The only thing that goes against this thinking uh, is actually what happened with the last Komosubi that was absent. That was Wakataka Kage in Natsu of 2023. Wakataka Kage landed at Maegashira 12 West, which was uh, the lowest ranking for dropping Komosubi in quite some time. Uh, and he was placed ahead of only one Makauchi Rikshi he deserved to be behind. Wakataka Kage, this Ma- Maegashira 9 West is shockingly always open when there's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> dropping Komosubi. And Wakataka Kage could have easily been placed at Maegashira 9 West as it was the exact same scenario we had with Abi and Asanoyama. There was an opening at Maegashira 9 West. Placing Wakataka Kage there would have given a full three-rank demotion to a 6-9 and nine record from the Maegashira 7 rank, which is what happened with Abi and Aoyama in 2022. But on this Bonske, they instead gave the 6-9 and nine Rikshi the 2.5 rank demotion instead of slotting in the drop in Komosubi. But the prevailing theory with Wakataka Kage is everybody knew he was out for an extended period of time. Sure. So the committee didn't give him any favors in his ranking on the spots cakes. They knew he would not be competing. That could just be a harebrained theory on why they differed from the norm of how they uh, usually treat these Komosubi. It could be the new way they want to treat them. That is the last data point we have, or uh, that could be correct. And Asanoyama, who we know will be competing in the next Basho until he, rips his calf muscle well, again yeah uh, as of <laughs> recording yes we have heard no reason to think that he won't be competing yeah so i i'm choosing to believe the wakataka kage thing was an exception and not the rule sure and then at maigashira 10 the the botske has evened itself out at this point and really plays itself out without too many hiccups the rest of the way. Hmm. So to fill the Magashira 10 ranks, we have two Makauchi Rikshi that can fill these spots. There is a Jurio Rikshi that deserves this rank, but we have yet to promote the final Makauchi Rikshi with a winning record. So I'm not considering any Jurio Rikshi just yet. So the two Rikshi that deserve the Magashira 10 ranks are the two Rikshi that occupied the Magashira 9 ranks in the previous Basho, Tamawashi and Shodai. Both went 7 and 8, so I have them both dropping exactly one rank to where they belong at Magashira 10 East for uh, Tamawashi, as he was on the east side previously, and Magashira 10 West for Shodai, as he was on the west side previously. Once again, Magashir 11, there's only two Makauchi Rikshi that deserve to take this rank. So we just have to determine the tiebreaker for who will be on the east side. And this one's a pretty simple tiebreaker. Ichi Yamamoto was on the east side previously. Midori Fuji was on the west side. That means I've got Ichi Yamamoto rising one rank to Magashir 11 east following his 8-7 and seven record for Magashir 12. And Midori Fuji dropping five ranks to Magashir 11 west following a 5-10 and 10 record from Magashir 6. At Magashir 12, we run into a new problem on this Bonske. We have two Magashira 12 slots to fill, but three Rikshi vying for these ranks. Yes. That means somebody will be underpromoted or overdemoted for the first time in the Magashira ranks on this Bonske. The Magashira 12 East tiebreaker is handled easily as Nishkigi was on the east side, while Hokuto Fuji and Chura Naumi were both on the west side. So I have Nishkigi dropping five ranks from Magashira 7 to Magashira 12 East following his 5 and 10 record, putting Nishkigi kind of back where he belongs in, I think, in most of our minds. It was a weird of, year. It was a weird year seeing him at Komosubi twice. <laughs> was it twice or is he just up there? One time, I can't remember. He lingered too close to the top for my tastes. (laughs) 
Well, now I have to know because I can't remember <laughs> if he like dropped out a little bit. Yeah, no, he was up there twice. Yeah. Good for you, Nish Kiki. Um, Good for you. Now, now, now stay back down here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> we can only uh, take like one one of these at a time where somebody like decides to overperform in their mm-hmm. 30s. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm still pulling for Sada Naomi. He's at my Gashira uh, 7. Give him two more Basho. Make make your Sanyaku debut at like 37. Would love to see it. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and then for Magashira 12 West, I believe Chuda Naomi is going to rise one rank following an eight and seven record from Magashira 13 to take that spot. He should win the tiebreaker over Hokuto Fuji due to having more wins than Hokuto Fuji, who had seven wins uh, in the previous Basho. So this would mean that Hokuto Fuji would be over demoted, which is something that I worry about probably too much. Uh, but he loses the tiebreaker here. And like we saw in the previous Basho, there's an instance where Koto Shoho and Tamawashi uh, both tied for the same rank. And I'm like, ah, they're they're not going to over demote Tamawashi uh, just in favor of another guy who like had more wins of him. That's too loose of a tiebreaker. They're going to keep him there. It's like, no, it wasn't. They over demoted Tamawashi. Uh, so <laughs> they don't care as much as you. Yeah. Like I said, I worry about it probably too much. So, but that showed me bonds gate committee is not going to hesitate to over demote somebody who loses the wins tiebreaker. The only other thing that lingers in my mind, because once again, I think about over demotions way too much is that way back at my Gashira nine West, we put Asano Yama, who deserves to be behind Hokuto Fuji. This causes a chain reaction that over demotes <laughs> Hokuto Fuji in favor of someone who deserves to be behind him, which is Butterfly one of my rules. Which, yeah, <laughs> it's one of my rules I don't like to break, but Sanyaku Rikshi are just built different and the rules don't apply to them. <laughs> uh, the same the same thing happened last Basho. I mentioned Tamawashi. Uh, the only reason he was over demoted last Basho is because a dropping Sanyaku Rikshi in Nishkigi was placed ahead of Tamawashi, despite deserving to be r- ranked below Tamawashi. So it's a thought that entered my mind, and then I quickly dismissed it as it's dumb. And then I found evidence <laughs> as it wriggled its way back in there. I went back and found evidence why it wasn't dumb. <laughs> okay. Or why it was a dumb thought. So in short, I'm not actually worried about Hokuto Fuji being over demoted here, despite the two minute diatribe that we just went on about Hokuto Fuji <laughs> being over demoted. <laughs> I'm predicting that to happen. I think it will happen. I'm not worried about it. I'm fine. I promise. <laughs> Your constant reassurance definitely makes me think that you're telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. You would be constantly reassured. I'm sure. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Uh, so we will put Hokuto Fuji at Magashir 13 East, demoting him to an unthinkable two ranks unthinkable. following a seven and eight record from Magashir 11. Then at Magashir 13 West, I'm going to put Takada Fuji, the only Rikshi that deserves the Magashir 13 rank. Takada Fuji would rise three ranks following a nine and six record from Magashira 16. Uh, And now I believe everybody should be hearing the alarm sound effect that Jake is going to be putting in post. That is the alarm for the last Makauchi Rikshi has been placed on the Bonske. The floodgates of Jurio are now open. Let me let Uh, me put in a placeholder for the edit that I'll totally do. Yeah. All right. There we go. Thank you. You Uh, got it. So. It was a very good Basho for some Jurio Rikshi toward the top of the rankings. So as I mentioned, there's a Jurio Rikshi that deserved the Magashira 10 rank and two more that deserve to be Magashira 11. All of those are going to be the next three Rikshi placed as the next Makauchi Rikshi doesn't deserve to be placed until Magashira 16. And they had a losing record for Magashira 15. So there's no controversy or difficulty with these placements. There's... Nobody that can come up and take the spot from them. So first, it should be Wakataka Kage, who went 14 and one from Jurio six. And I have him at my Gashira at 14 East. Then it should be Endo landing at my Gashira 14 West, following a 12 and three record from Jurio three. Chiyo Shoma also went 12 and three from Jurio three, but he was on the West side. So the East side Endo will get the preference here. Then that means Chiyoshoma should land at Magashira 15 East, rising from Jurio 3 following his 12 and 3 record. The next ranking is the hardest one for me in the second half of the Bonske. So 
Hagayaki is the Rikshi that deserves to be ranked next after he went 11 and four from Jurio five. He deserves to be ranked Maigashira 15, but lying behind him is Roga who went seven and eight from the spot that we are trying to fill from the Maigashira 15 West spot. And he could feasibly be kept at this same rank. In fact, we saw in the last bonds K that Jurio Rikshi were actually kind of treated as equals when it came to contending for spots with Ooh. Makuuchi Rikshi. I know it Shut was her. awful. Yeah. Uh, so that is most Jurya Rikshi in the last Basho were treated as e- equals. There was one that unexpectedly got the shaft. So four of the five Jurio promotees from the last Basho were in this mythical Jurio joy, the top three Jurio ranks. The fifth, was Oshoma, who was only ranked Jurio 4, but had a civil, similar 11-4 record to Kageyaki this Basho. When Oshoma went to the top division, he was placed behind a Makuuchi Rikshi that deserved to be ranked two ranks behind him. So we had right. the Jurio Rikshi in the top three ranks last time. They all got treated on equal footing as the Makuuchi Rikshi at the gotcha. bottom. And then Oshoma, just one rank behind at Jurio 4, He got the shaft. He was put behind somebody that deserved to be two ranks ahead of him. So using that as a precedent, I'm going to predict that Roga keeps his Maigashira 15 West rank for the third consecutive Basho, if it happens, (laughs) uh, and does not get demoted at all following his seven and eight record, despite deserving to be one rank below Kageyaki. I could, this one I could easily see flipped with these two. This is, I feel like maybe a little bit of a risk, uh, but I can we'll see already what tell you ahead of time this is going to be my pick because historically, Kagiyaki always gets luck of the Bonske for no reason. I hadn't considered that. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> he's yes, I I I think he's he's cursed or anti cursed, whatever, whatever the opposite <laughs> of curse is. He's got lucky. that going on. You already said it. Lucky. Eh, I agree to disagree here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I remember there was like a streak of a year or two where every time his name came up, it was like, why is he like, did they just decide that he gets an extra rank for no reason? <laughs> I, I'm not, damn it. Now I'm going to dig into it. I know there was one. <laughs> it was weird... never severe, but it was, it was consistently a little bit more than you thought. I remember there was one time he got really unlucky. Um, Mm. This is what I this always stood out to me. He was Maigashira 13 West of course back you just in pull this Ki- out of your butt right away. Kyushu of 2019. I knew where to look. <laughs> uh, I didn't know the exact dates or the ranks. Uh, he went 10 and five for Maigashira 13 West. The next Basho, he was ranked Maigashira 11 West. He only got a two rank promotion following a 10 win Basho from Maigashira 13, which usually you get 10 wins at Maigashira 13. You're probably expecting like six or seven. There's yeah. Usually something weird happening that allows you to get that over promotion. You're, you're so. usually one of the guys they grab when it's like, oh, we got a, a a hole to fill up in the top. Oh, that guy got 10 wins. Screw it. Yeah. Put him up higher than he deserves. Yeah. Uh, so maybe maybe Kageaki is going to be tr- channeling a little bit of that unluck, cursed luck uh, <laughs> for the, the next opposite Basho. of a blessing is. Yeah. I, yeah. I <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the world will never know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Magashira 16, Kageyaki at Magashira 16 East. Um, don't think he's, we're, we're just hoping he gets unlucky here. <laughs> then at Magashira 16 West, we're going to welcome back with open arms. Boo shows on to the top division for the fourth time in his career. I think he'll take the Magashira 16 West rank following a nine and six record from Jurio two. He was in the Jurio joy. So I think him deserving to be one rank ahead of the final Makuuchi Rikshi to be placed is enough to keep him ahead of that Rikshi. And at Magashira 17 East, the last Rikshi to be placed on this bonds K I have Nishiki Fuji. He will be dropping five ranks following a five and 10 record for Magashira 12. And really there's no other option here there's no other makuuchi rikshi that deserves to be ranked higher than him he's the last remaining makuuchi rikshi that deserves to be ranked in the top division uh and the next jurio rikshi that deserves to be ranked is ono katsu who deserves to be ranked jurio one uh but he was buried in jurio at jurio 12 he had a great jurio debut 13 and 2 uh look for him to win the top division you show in september when he makes his debut um (laughs) naturally 
as Rikshi do now. As uh, yes, as is apparently now normal. <laughs> yeah. But there's no he deserves to be ranked behind Nishiki Fuji. He was at Jury of 12. There's no way they jump him ahead. Right. There's just trying to emphasize the point, Nishiki Fuji is going to be the last guy on the Bonds K, unless they decide to flip him and Bushos on. It's one of those two as the last guy, but I feel pretty strongly at Nishiki Fuji. So we brought up five Rikshi from the ranks of Jury. Wakataka Kage. Back in the top division, healthy for the first time in over a year, will he be competing in the top division? Uh, Endo, Chiyoshoma, Kageyaki, and Bu Shozan. So no newcomers to the top division. Everybody will be coming back into the top division with this group. Uh, but that does mean we had to send some Rikshi down to Jurio. Heartbreakingly, that includes Takeru Fuji, the record-setting Yusho winner uh, from Haru. Uh, hey, can we, uh, can we talk about that one real quick? Because I imagine yeah. that that's a question that uh, I imagine at least several people will be asking is he for sure gone from the top division he's, or is this a maybe? No, he's absolutely gone. The There's really no controversy with the Jurio promotions and demotions this time. It's all pretty clear cut. Takedu Fuji went 0-15 from Maigashira 6. That translates to him deserving to be like Jurio 4. And as we mentioned, there's... Who shows on who deserves to be Maigashira 16, which is five ranks ahead of him. That's the sure. last guy we brought up from Jurio. Yeah, it's it's pretty clear that Takedu Fuji is going down. Like even Toke, Toki Hayate, who went six and nine from uh, Maigashira 15, would have priority over him to be the next guy kept. Sure. Takedu Fuji was like seventh on the list. I think the only other thing that I could see being a maybe here is... Um... Nishiki Fuji uh, is barely hanging on. Uh, Takeru Fuji is also like, you know, he only had five fewer losses than than Nishiki Fuji, but from six ranks higher. So yeah. like, I, I can see that being like something that uh, you, you you clearly you seem very confident about it. Is it is it yeah. something that we have more precedent for, or is it just something where um, you're you're comfortable just... based on the numbers that? Based on the numbers, yeah. It, yeah. I just don't see it happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ryan doesn't see it happening is as good a, a reason as any, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, all the Bonsuke predictors I've seen have been like, yeah, the Jury of Makauchi exchange is fairly simple. Yeah. This Basho. I imagine we probably don't have huge amounts of raw data for every single rank having a an Owen 15, but... Yeah. But from six and six and lower, you think that's that's a guarantee? Uh, we can check that real quick. Magashir is six, zero wins. Next Basho, where do they end up? And and yeah, I mean, we won't be able to go too in depth without completely analyzing those each of those uh, bonds case entirely. Yeah, most of the time they're ending up at Jurio. There was one case in 2005. Magashir six west went 0 and 15, landed at Magashir 17. Um, but there there was a world where Takeru Fuji could have stayed if there wasn't such a strong showing from the top of Jurio. This yeah. Bunch. If Jurio had sucked more, absolutely Takeru Fuji uh, could have stayed. Um, but Jurio didn't, so okay. it's tough luck on him. Just wanted to make sure we address that. But yeah, who are our other four going down? Uh, Mitoru, Toki Hayate, Tomokaze, Tsudu Gisho, all kind of in that gatekeeper role, especially like Mitoru, Tomokaze, Tsudu Gisho, uh, Toki Hayate. Yet to remain, yet to see where his potential is, but those other three are just kind of going to be guys jumping back and forth between Jurio yeah. and Makauchi, their career. Toki Hayate was kind mm -hmm. of a maybe if things had worked out differently, maybe he could have stuck it out. But yeah, similar, yeah. similar story where you got too many guys from Jurio that need to come up. Yep. And Toki Hayate will probably be back up in Aki. I think he'll probably do good at the top of Jurio next time. So yep. not common to do very, <laughs> very well in your opener. Um, yep. We've been spoiled recently. So. <laughs> We're about to be spoiled again with Onokatsu, I'm telling you. There you go. Uh, so, Jake, besides uh, Roga versus Kageaki, anything else <laughs> uh, jumping out to you as what I potentially got wrong? No, I think the other thing that I've kind of got my eyes on, uh, not beyond specifically the Kageaki situation, I think the Jurio placements is going to be interesting here. Um, you're, yeah. as usual, going through going through your outline, like the your logic makes sense to me. But it it definitely is one where um, 
just based on their records, it feels like there could potentially be a couple guys hopping up higher uh, than you have them. No, okay. To me, it feels like we got we, five guys and you just packed them right in the bottom. We got to so remember <laughs> the Asanoyama going 13 and two and Ichi Nojo going 14 and one from Juria one and two. I think the highest one of those guys got was Mike Ishira 13. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess regardless, that's what I'm keeping my eye on because like like we mentioned as we were going through it, the top of Mike Ishira feels bad, but like the logic is pretty sound. Yeah. Inevitably, there will just like, you know, just like any Bonds K, there will be a couple like completely baffling. Like, why are these two guys switched to half a rank? From yeah, where we thought. But like, I don't I don't I don't see anything where there's going to be a huge miss. Yeah, Asanoyama so. was like a potential one. But like, yeah, Asanoyama, I think, has the biggest potential. Uh, I got him at my gosh year nine West. If we're super concerned about over demotions or if they just keep the same precedence as they had with Wakataka Kage, not out of the range of possibilities that Asanoyama ends up at my at 13 East. They're just like, that eh, you weren't here. We're not going to give you any preferential treatment. Right. I don't think that'll happen. The other one that I think like Ono Sato and Abi, maybe flipping to those two, maybe me yeah. having Ono Sato jump over, not the right move. Uh, but yeah. And then Roga Kageyaki. Those are like the two big ones that really stick out. I feel, I mean, I feel really good about this one, which sucks for Guess Abazke, because then everybody's going to feel really good. Everybody's going to have a good prediction, which means I'm not going to stand <laughs> out and be special. Or, or <laughs> wrong in the same way as each other, yeah. because the Bonske committee were the ones who decided to yes. throw logic out. <laughs> yeah. All right, oh, well. so that wraps up the Bonske prediction. The actual Bonske is going to be released on Sunday, June 30th, for the Basho that starts on July 14th. That's all we've got for you, Jake. What do we possibly have coming up before our preview? The only thing that might be coming out before then that is not our standard set of episodes uh, is um, a we already did a recap of what happened at Nationals in uh, U.S. Amateur Sumo. Um, but there will also be an episode where I'm talking to two of the new trustees on the board of directors of the U.S. Sumo Federation. Uh, Karen Zabel and Christina Griffin are both new to that position and uh, just wanted a chance to talk about what happened at the national meeting and what's going to happen coming up uh, and just introduce these two new trustees to the uh, uh, to the wrestlers and all that. So keep an eye out for that mm, probably next week or so, certainly before the Basho. But that's about it. Yep. Oh, and, and the newsletter. Obviously, yep. Newsletter and obviously the the Bonds K recap will be coming out before the preview. I think our preview might be a little earlier than usual jake is big timing us and traveling somewhere so he decided <laughs> we need to change our recording schedule heaven, just for him heaven forbid my family flies across the country to see each other on the same weekend that we normally do our preview <laughs> but <laughs> preview yeah roughly a week ahead of the basho is where we target we'll keep yep. you posted yeah all right so until next time throw your salt high keep moving forward <laughs>